Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Howdy and hello, I'm Travis Davis, Vice President of Ship Operations, Battleship Texas Foundation. So we are in dry dock with the Battleship Texas here at uh, Gulf Copper in Galveston, Texas. Uh, first question that the internet wants to know, uh, there's absolutely no way to get into dry dock and see the ship, right? Uh, you would be wrong on that one, Ryan. Uh, you could actually come and take a tour on the dry dock and see the ship out of the water uh, so long as the ship is on the dry dock. Uh, go to our website, battleshiptexas.org, and you can sign up for a tour and come down and get a hour and a half to two hour tour of the ship while she's out of the water and specifically on the dock floor. And you will be within a very select group of people who have seen and walked under a battleship uh, out of the water, specifically this battleship. So. This guy hasn't even walked under his own ship. <laughs> and uh, for those of us who travel from out of state, booking a flight a couple of months in advance, how long at a minimum do you plan on staying in the yard? Uh, as of right now, our project runs through the end of May, but uh, there is a potential that we may extend out with extra work uh, and keep the ship on dock and do a lot more things uh, through at least to the end of the summer. But that's still kind of up in the air right now, uh, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. So if you're booking a flight for March, April, May, you can help support the museum and that helps them stay here longer and do a, accomplish a greater scope of work. So next question, you're removing a lot of material from the ship. Right. That's all just getting thrown away. Nobody has any chance of acquiring any of that, right? Absolutely uh, not. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we are selling, um, with, the, with the steel that's coming off the ship, we are processing it into, um, well, into souvenirs. So we're actually making shapes out of it so like the the silhouette of the ship which will be available on our website for donation uh, we are looking at doing a a larger shape of the state of texas it's a cutout uh our, our coo had the great idea of making a dinner bell out of it but once we got it and looked at it it was like wait this this would be a perfect wall hanger minus, minus the clapper so uh so we're looking at doing those things as well and we're any other great ideas that you have let ryan know so he can let us know and we can do some cool things with it uh, one thing that we generally do not do is sell this steel in bulk to people uh, we we keep very tight control over what the end product that is the steel is used for because it, it's incumbent on us as the stewards of the ship to make sure that the image of the ship is maintained so i'm not saying anyone's going to do any crazy with the steel uh, but we want to make sure that that potential does not happen um, because we represent the ship's crew, we represent the, the ship, and we re represent the state of Texas. Are there any other ways that people can support the ongoing work on the ship? Yes. So like you good folks watching Ryan's video, this video right now, you can come to our YouTube channel and watch our uh, support our channel um, and our social media as well. We are on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Uh, those aren't all monetary driven um, um, platforms, but that level of awareness helps us and helps us grow our uh, engagement. And uh, if you want to contribute monetarily, directly monetary, again, you can go to our website, battleshiptexas.org and make a donation there. We have a lot of cool stuff that you can, you can purchase and um, which also funds our operations, not only you know, our activities here, but at our off ship uh, warehouse, our shop where we are, we're storing our five inch guns, our, well, and all the uh, anti aircraft battery. Um, because right now we have no ticket revenue and we are relying entirely off of, um, of donation. So um, let's talk about the project itself. You, you get the ship here, you get her out of the water. What are some of the big surprises? This is your first time seeing her out of the water? It is. You, you were a kid the last time she's dry docked, or were you even born yet? I, Ryan, I am, I am older than I look. <laughs> um, I was... Clean dry dock living. It's a clean dry dock living, exactly. Clean historic ship living. <laughs> um, no, I was um, seven the last time the ship was dry docked, so, um, so no, I did not make the, the trip down to see it. And, but uh, the big surprises for us were the actual, um, when the ship came out of the water, one was the absolute, uh, we were expecting a lot thicker marine growth on the ship. There actually wasn't as much. Uh, the other thing that we were looking for was uh, to see the paint largely failed, right? With the amount of flooding that we had, the amount of um, 
well, just based on that, we were expecting to see holes everywhere and the, the paint just coating system just gone. Once we got the ship out of the water and washed all the marine growth off, the epoxy primer that was put on in 89 um, before the ship was splashed was intact. It was like 90% intact. So, and where it had failed, it was mostly at the wind water line, mm -hmm. uh, which, you, which we, you'd expect. Um, so we were really pleased and really surprised by that. And it was, it was really, um, really, really nice. The, the third thing that really surprised us, which shouldn't have, was that all the holing, um, so all the holes where all that water came in, except for at the wind water line, uh, came from rusting from the inside out. So okay. um, you think about it, you know, you have a good coating on the exterior. On the interior of the ship, there is, um, most of the tankage does not have any coatings on it. So you have water in an oxygenated environment just sitting there. It's going to rust and corrode pretty heavily and, you know, rust the ship from the inside out. And so that is the critical takeaway for those of us who have our own battleships back home. I know you guys are out there. Uh, that we need to be looking at the inside of the ship more so than the outside. A, a modern coating of painting, or a modern system of coatings that we're putting on the outside of our ship will probably last 20 or 30 years between dry docking. It's what's going on on the inside of the ship where there's water sitting. Right. Just like Mama said, it's on the inside what counts. <laughs> um, it's exactly right. So, I mean, you everyone worries about the hull, but it's taking care of your, your superstructure in your entire watertight envelope to let, you know, stop rainwater from intruding in, from raining down through the decks, resting out decks and getting down into your bilges and resting out your bilges. Um, the the um, keeping the, the inner bottoms dry and coated um, and, and that will, you know, allow, allow a ship to last indefinitely. I mean, um, in in the water. I mean, you hear it. I hear it. It's you got to get the ship out of the water. You got to get the ship out of the water. And you know, from a long term preservation strategy, you know, yeah, that is. There's there's pros and cons to that, right? And generally speaking, if it's done well, that does work. But there is a huge cost associated with that. You know, the reason why um, the UK did it so much is because they already had dry docks that weren't being used. So they could throw these ships into these smaller dry docks that weren't being used and problem solved. Well, if you maintain them, yes, problem solved, but you still have issues like Victory's having, like some of the other ships are having. Um, so it's a lot more, it's a lot more nuanced than just get the ship out of the water. Um, so for us to build a, a dry berth here or a purpose-built uh, graving dock here for the battleship, we were looking at a minimum of a $50 million cost. Um, and what over the long term, what is that savings? I mean, basically, you're still having to do the same amount of work, right? So you're still having to repair steel over time. You're still having to coat the ship over time. But what you're saving are the docking fees. So the cost to sit on a dry dock like this, you pay by the day. So the cost can be anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars per day just to sit here. So if you're doing a massive project like this, where we're on dock for nine months, so that meter is running, right? So that's where the big cost is in a, in a dry docking. But if you do the 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 budgetary comparison between those savings versus building a dry dock, it would take decades to 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 weigh that out. Um, whereas if you everyone kind of had the resources to plan a little bit properly, you know, you're dry docking your ship every 15 to 20 years based on, you know, the Navy's recommendations. And in some instances, if you're in really good shape, you can stretch that out longer, you know, to, to 30 years, which you guys are coming up on 30 years, right? We're just past 30 years. And the Navy's contract with us says that every 20 years, you should be doing this for a uh, permanently moored vessel. Right. But at the same time, if you're if you're properly maintaining your ship, you're taking the ship every 15, 20, 30 years and going into dry dock, what that what happens is you are going in for a shave and a haircut versus open heart surgery. So and, and that's the, the big issue that we've had here it has been uh, just deferred maintenance. So from 1948, um, for the issues uh, from how the ship was birthed in 48 to um, well, all the way through now, it's just been a huge backlog of deferred maintenance. And most of that deferred maintenance built up between 1948 and 1988. So when the ship was dry docked, that first dry docking that was done in 88, that was, you know, a $9 million worth, 
worth of work done on the hull in 1989 dollars that replaced about 13 percent of the hull of the wetted surface uh, we're doing a lot more than that um but that was just to it was almost just triage right yeah. because the ship was at that point had been full of water i mean all of our inner bottom tankings were full the blisters were full of water which is why they look absolutely trash behind us well where there's still blister <laughs> ad <laughs> um and so that was just triage to get the ship in a in a serviceable state and then the state had planned a follow-up dry docking within 15 years but because of you know a state asset you're relying on state appropriations that didn't happen and then you know you could go another 30 years and here's where we're at and now we're doing having to do not as much triage now i mean there is some of that um we're being a little bit more proactive in what we're doing and looking at the long-term preservation of the ship and, and the things that we're doing right now. Um, and of course, the same issue, we, we have the same issue that everyone has, that you guys have, that, that even the big the big ships that rake in lots of money, that, you know, that have lots of attendance, like um, the aircraft carriers like Midway and Intrepid um, and Missouri and Iowa, the same issue is it's still limited funding. You, you still have only has so much funding. Funding only goes so far. So for us, that means our next dry docking, which we're already planning for being at 15 years, is going to be a little bit more expensive than what we anticipated because we're going to have to do more work to the ship than what, um, because we didn't get exactly what we wanted to get done now. And that work in there in, in 15 years would be more, again, addressing some of that backlog, but also more, again, putting the ship on a better step towards the future. So. That's, a, that's a great segue. What is the scope of work for this year's project? Plug the holes. <laughs> no, I, that's very simplistic, but what we're doing is, um, we were actually, the, the original torpedo blisters that were put on the ship in, in the mid twenties, uh, we're removing those. Uh, from just above the waterline down and completely rebuilding them. Um, because of how they were built in the 20s, they were built meant to be a lightweight sacrificial structure. Uh, they just didn't hold up well over time. Even by the end of World War II, the Navy was pretty much writing off any structural work in them because they were just so deteriorated. Um, the rivet seams leaked all the time. Um, I think we actually did a better job of keeping them dry at San Jacinto while she was floating over the last 15 years than the Navy did during World War II. I mean, we have sounding reports that show 15, 20 feet of water in most of these tanks. And um, and we were able to, you know, despite a lot of pumping, keep the water levels down in them. Um, but, you know, the damage had already been done to these tanks. There was already a, a, a compromised structure that then a more corrosive environment or you know, they were filled with water in 48 and then they were allowed to corrode more freely. Um, so outside of the blisters, we're removing those. We're actually adding back on new blisters from just above to replace that section that was done or removed. Um, and then the area behind us right here where it's all rusty gray, that is all um, inside where the blister was at, right? So that's all that holing except for the square holes. That's from water sitting against the original hull of the ship uncoated on, on the inside and, and rusting out um, so all of that will get repaired and then back here where uh, you see some of the work behind the scaffolding here there's more opened up area that's a, a, a critical trim tank for the ship so the keel is you know pretty much right behind us and that supports that whole counterbalance stern here um, the counter of the stern and the um, so we're replacing all of that skin we're, we're tying in the uh, structural members that were put in in, in the 2013 and during a, a major uh, structural repair project that happened during that time period, period, tying all that new steel into the, the new skin so it's all nice and tight and strong. Uh, and then back over here, we've done double plating above the, the rudder over, over another trim tank. The, and then along, th again, along through the bottom, we're, we're, we are patching holes and then trying to put as much steel on new steel on the ship as, as our budget will allow. One of the key, key things that we did based on those discoveries that we found is, you know, the, the initial surprises is we hadn't budgeted doing this, but we decided to go through every inner bottom tank and clean out all the mud mm -hmm. and all the concrete salvage patches that had been put in and all the rust scale that accumulated and, and then what 
you know, and obviously with um, the foam that we use to uh, to retain buoyancy, you know, for the trip down here, if, if we did have a catastrophic event, um, we removed all of that. Uh, we removed something like 50 cubic yards of, of, of rust. So if you put that in mind, that's a, that's a big roll off dumpster. I mean, full of just rust that came out of the bottom of the ship. Um, and then same with mud and then, um, you know, a, a lot of, of concrete as well. And we're still actually removing concrete right now, concrete patches right now. Um, and uh, the, the balance of the foam is getting, so that big pile right over here of white stuff, that's some of the last foam that's coming out of the ship. That's the last areas that we have foam and that'll be, uh, should be wrapping up this week. So, which would be really, really good, a big milestone, so. And no, before you ask, we are not straightening the rudder. <laughs> so the rudder was a known issue. Like you knew the rudder was bent from the previous dry docking reports, right? right? Not to leave you hanging, but you can find part two of this video on our uh, Battleship Texas YouTube channel uh, for the con exciting conclusion of this series. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There are links in the description down below for ways you can donate to Battleship Texas and to their store and other social medias. We recommend that you support them. You can support Battleship New Jersey by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our channel. Thanks for watching.